parents in Australia will now be fined for not vaccinating their kids. The Australian government taking away about 21 U.S. dollars every two weeks for each child not up to date with their required vaccinations. But how should we regulate vaccines in the U.S.? Our parent and doctor panel is here to weigh in. Mother and attorney Keisha Hebon, mother Carla D. Adesi, and pediatrician Dr. Diane Hess. Thank you all for being here this morning. Thank you. Keisha, I'll start with you. Um, I'll admit, this is a confusing topic for me. As, a, as a father, I have decided to vaccinate on the basic stuff, but I, I recognize the right for parents to have that choice for their child. What do you make about Australia's policy and what should happen here in the U.S.? Right. Well, there are three exemptions that a parent can opt out, and it's basically for religious reasons, medical reasons, or just philosophical reasons. I believe that the United States should follow suit with what Australia is doing because we don't want to wait until we have a, a large outbreak of some deadly disease like measles or something that could affect the population as a whole. And I understand the parents' concerns, but I don't want my child going to school with students who are not vaccinated because of the risk of there being a big outbreak. So I think the United States should crack down on parents who refuse to do it. Carla, yeah, fines and mm -hmm. they're making it illegal in Australia. But, you know, famously, America is a place of freedom, of choice. Uh, should parents have that choice? That's exactly right. So as a parent, I believe that this really is not a debate about the necessity of vaccinations. I believe that it's a debate over governmental control. And I believe that as a parent, I have the right to decide to vaccinate or not to vaccinate my children. I decided to vaccinate my three girls, but I did opt out of one vaccine called Gardasil. And I'm thankful that I have the parental right to um, opt out of that. And I believe that limited government is really best. I think that when government plays the role of a parent, they play a terrible role in parenting. Um, we've seen that historically, that they're very wasteful with their spending. And I'm more concerned about the illegal immigration and the diseases that are coming in with that. We need to protect our children from a lot of the outbreaks that we're seeing that haven't been here for decades. Well, doctor, that you, you point to the statistics on this. You look at it from a, a, a sort of a physician's view how important are vaccinations and do you have to mandate them for them to be effective? I, I do believe we have to mandate them because what happened in our country is we have an absolute failure of our vaccine program uh, through the from, from like the early 2000s. Our vaccination rates dropped immensely. We had an outbreak of measles in California in 2015. I work in New York City. We had an outbreak of pertussis in a school down the block from my office. These are because parents were making decisions that they weren't uh, prepared to make. They were um, Sometimes you have to trust your physician. Choosing your doctor is, is a, a bond of trust. If you come to me and say, you know what, I like you and I want everything but the vaccines because I don't really think that you're right about vaccines, then you don't trust me as a but physician. But not everyone gets that bond with their doctor. Not I mean, a lot of it can be very clinical. It can be a different person every time. Suddenly your baby's there and there's four needles going into them and you don't know what it is. You can understand the hesitancy. Yes, and that's our job as physicians to educate our patients. Mm -hmm. And that's what public health is. But historically, the U.S. has always favored over uh, public health it, uh, um, as opposed to one parent's religious belief. Back to 1905, there was a case of Jason, Jacobson versus Massachusetts where um, the court decided that the, um, pe the person can refuse a vaccine and get a fine, but the public health prevails. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. Statistically, and, if you look at all 50 mm -hmm. states and you look at the percentages, the yeah. lowest states, 90% are vaccinated. So that means only 10% are not vaccinated sure. of our children. So 90% are protected. 10% are at risk. And we need, last word real quick, right, and we need to enforce that more so that the number doesn't drop because, like the doctor said, there's all these you know, outbreaks of diseases such as measles, and we don't want innocent children to be infected. Like drugs and health care and our education system, this is something every viewer out here and parent deals with. So we appreciate some smart folks giving us your perspective this morning. Thank you, Bunny. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.